Good morning, folks. So uh, today I am out. I'm gonna shoot some of this good stuff right here. It's just some uh, black and white film, bulk loaded film that I had left over in my bulk roller. Um, and I wanted to go out, finish it up, and talk to you guys a little bit today about creative struggles and kind of just go through the process. Look, look at these beautiful, beautiful flowers. But anyways, uh, first things first, we're gonna go load up this into the Leica M2. We're gonna go out street shooting and then, uh, like I said, later on we'll talk about creative struggles in my photography or in just street photography. mentioned earlier we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the creative struggles with photography um, and then kind of discuss what exactly is it and how to get out of it over the last couple of weeks I had to refigure out almost everything um, when it comes to motivation with creating just creativity in general and my photography and the direction in which I want to go um, it's it's something that we always have to keep in the back of our mind and truth be told it's very tiring to always have to think of it. Got the film out. 
you know, let's let's start off with what exactly is a creative rut. A creative rut is a period of time in which you find yourself very unmotivated, uninspired, or maybe you just find it, you know, hard to go out there and start shooting and making photographs. This is very common among photographers, videographers, anybody that has a uh, passion, career, or job that involves some type of creativity, you know, using your brain to exercise different angles, perspectives, and views. Uh, I actually asked you guys on Instagram, you know, what are some of the creative struggles that you guys have? And a lot of them are very relative to uh, what I'm going to be talking about right now. And it's very, very close to what I've been experiencing lately. And for those of you guys who know, I've been working on a body of work called crosswalk which essentially is documenting the crosswalks and intersections of san francisco because that's where i feel like most of my uh, most of my favorite images and moments are taken right smack dead middle of the project i would say three to four months in i hit this creative rut and i feel like i'm still in it right now and this creative rut not only uninspired me to shoot the project, but it greatly affected my confidence in just photography in general. The first things first you have to realize is that every creative, whether you're a photographer, you're a painter, you're, you're oh, dog. <laughs> every creative is going to go through some type of creative rut. And the second thing is you need to realize that you need to stop worrying about being in a creative rut because at the end of the day, creative ruts will eventually go away everybody will snap out of it at some point it may take you know some people a week it may take some people a couple of hours but creative ruts are definitely something that every creative is going to have and with that being said just know that anybody who experiences it is going to snap out of it eventually now i want to talk a little bit about how i got myself into this creative rut and the first part in that is setting limitations for yourself limiting yourself with photography is very beneficial but there's also the downside to it after a while of limiting yourself to like for example in my situation a crosswalk project you're not allowing yourself to see the world in a much more optimistic and you know potential heavy way essentially what you're doing is you're looking for specific particular moments so that can be one source of uh being in a creative rut maybe you're looking for something too specific and i had a conversation with uh nick mayo also known here on youtube as nick exposed awesome dude and we always have these back and forth conversations on photography and he says well he goes out there with a level of optimism, a high level of optimism of not knowing what's out there so that he can explore more of the territory. And, uh, you know, I kind of thought about it and I thanked Nick a lot because I think that was kind of the reason for my creative struggle of uh, not being able to go out there and photograph everything. You know, I, I primarily look for scenes at the crosswalk where the entire world around me is photographable. And that can really hold you back. So, you know, maybe keep that in consideration as well. If you're shooting for a particular project and you want to regain that level of optimism and that level of being able to create photos again, try your best to maybe put the project on hold for a little bit. Get away from limiting yourself to the specifics that you are photographing and just photograph everything that you see. Um, but I definitely do want to suggest for number two that you don't get too... Uh, you don't get too caught up in social media. Now, social media is one of those things where, again, there's a benefit to it, but there's also a very high negative as well. There's a good and bad for social media. As for the good side of it, you're able to share your work, you're able to get the recognition, exposure, you're able to meet new people, have conversations. Very, very beneficial. That's the most beneficial part of social media nowadays, to connect with people that are across the world almost instantly. But social media can be very toxic um, and you may not even know it right now but you probably are over intoxicated with social media if you happen to uh, check your Instagram you know every single time you're able to pull your phone out or if you are you know if you're a youtuber or a photographer like that you know checking your views or checking your subscribers and such like that it's very toxic because social media you know, it's a business after all. Instagram is a business. And the more you post, the better business they're going to get. Because essentially, at the end of the day, they want interaction. They want a lot of people to be on their uh, apps or websites, whatever it may be. And so if you follow a certain algorithm, they then reward you with likes, with exposure. And that makes you feel good. But then there comes a point where you're solely only shooting 
or recording or creating for the sole purpose of likes or for the sole purpose of that recognition. And when Instagram or YouTube, you know, pulls that away or maybe they change up the algorithm and you start to see a decrease in likes, a decrease in views, a a decrease in subscribers, it makes you feel like you are not creating good, valuable content, which is bullshit because at the end of the day, if you are maintaining a high level output, um, you know, the views and likes, they don't matter whatsoever. Those, again, you can't get trapped in the toxicity of Instagram or social media because that is a business. They have you trapped within their business. I mean, if you look at Joel Myrowitz, you look over at his Instagram, he doesn't have as many likes, views as somebody like Peter McKinnon. Social media is extremely toxic. Understand that sometimes it's okay to step away from it, unplug from it, to not really get caught up in the numbers, to not get caught up in all of the likes, dislikes, comments, views, whatever it may be that you guys experience with social media. The last tip I have for you is to just go out and shoot every day and bring your camera everywhere you go. I know it may be hard with schedules, working a day job, um, you know, maybe you're in school, You don't have a lot of time to shoot, but dedicate 10 to 15 minutes or at least 30 minutes to just photographing anything and everything in your site. Always keep a small camera with you. I mean, maybe you want to switch it up a little bit every now and then. It's a good thing to do. And I don't know if you guys have seen it lately on my YouTube channel. The last two of my videos were shooting with the Pentax X7, uh, shooting more like landscape stuff. You know, I had to step away from street photography because For some reason, every time I went out there, I couldn't make a photograph that I liked. I was very unhappy with my performance out there. Yeah, I mean, it was a great break from my usual street photography setting. And uh, truth be told, I went back out there to uh, do some street photography earlier this week with my camera. And my God, just the world looks so different and interesting again. Yeah, that's my little conversation on creative struggles. I hope that helped you out. Um, I'm still healing from mine right now. Uh, You know, I just shot a bunch of black and white photos. It's not street photography, but, you know, today I wanted to shoot a lot of contrast, black and white, go back to black and white after shooting color for six months. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching again. I hope you guys enjoyed the photos, enjoyed the talk, enjoyed the walk. Um, And, yeah, kind of awkward because people are walking by. But uh, thank you guys for watching again. If you made it till the end, drop a like, and I'll see you guys next time. Minolta gang. (laughs)